over here. And let's see if we can get closed captions. There we go. All right, Bob, take it away. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, our um, our session, exploring government and civics in virtual, in-person, and hybrid settings. A free ebook for teachers and students. So we're really happy to see you today, uh, at least in this virtual environment. Uh, I'm Robert Malloy. Uh, even though the screen says Sharon Edwards, I'm using her computer because it's a better computer. Um, I teach. Uh, in the College of Education at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I coordinate the history teacher license program area uh, and also work with uh, teachers in the uh, uh, schools with, uh, in a variety of uh, settings. And I'm joined today by my colleagues. Hi everyone, my name is Tori Trust. I'm Associate Professor of Learning Technology at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And as I mentioned previously to some of you who were in here, I am uh, Bob's golf protege and also his history protege. So I learn stuff from Bob every single day that I have conversations with him and happy to provide my ed tech skills and expertise to bring some of his amazing ideas to life. And we are also joined by my exceptional doctoral student. Go ahead, Chen Young. Hi everyone, my name is Chen Yang Xu. I am a research assistant working with Tori and Bob. And it's an honor working with two amazing teachers and working on this project. Okay, well, we're gonna advance the slide. Uh, I will say, however, in terms of my golf game, I have been told not to give up the day job. <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, we want to uh, start by showcasing a project that we've been working on for the past year plus. Um, it's a civics government history ebook, um, free online, uh, that we began to develop when Massachusetts implemented a new set of curriculum frameworks. And we have specifically developed developed the book or started developing the book around the eighth grade civics and government uh, standards that are in the new Massachusetts curriculum framework. And we tried to take every learning standard, there's 50 of them, in that eighth grade and develop activities and uh, learning plans and resources for teachers and students. Uh, we actually started this before virtual learning um, and we're thinking of it as a set of resources multicultural and multimodal that could work so well in in-person classrooms now in this um, extraordinary set of circumstances that we are all in with some virtual some in-person some hybrid uh, we think this is maybe a great resource in all of these different uh, platforms. As we developed the book, we found that it had a lot of connections to AP government and politics. And um, uh, it emphasized, and we have tried to emphasize in developing it, um, the importance of student engagement and civic action. The big theme in the Massachusetts frameworks, uh, it's a big theme in building democracy for all. So we call this, and we're going to have you uh, have an opportunity to look at it uh, and give us feedback and suggestions and use it in your classes. It's, it's there free online um, for interactive explorations. We didn't think of ourselves as writing another textbook of facts and names and dates and places. Uh, but rather a way for teachers and students to interactively explore all of these topics that are in the civics and government framework from the initial institutions and uh, structures of American government all the way through to uh, freedom of the press and media literacy. So that's the context we're going to uh, showcase the book. We're going to give you a chance to take a look at some of the activities. We're going to show you some of the spin-offs and 
um, new developments that we've been able to uh, put together with this and, and uh, want to hear from you, your reactions and your suggestions. So with that, let me pass it to uh, Jen Yang. Let me um, just jump in really quickly. I want to note that when the Massachusetts civics and government standards came out, and often when new standards come out, teachers are kind of left scrambling to figure out how to completely adapt their practice with very little resources, training, or support. So Bob and I were able to get a public service engagement grant through the University of Massachusetts Amherst to fund the development which has taken, uh, it took about a full year of writing and publishing. And then we created a um, open access version, the CCBY NCSA letters you see in the second line there is the Creative Commons license uh, means it's non-commercial, um, but as long as you give attribution and remix it using a Creative Commons license, you can actually take any section, any, uh, any chapter, any section of text, any media from this book and remix it for your own practice. You can even have your students go in and remix, uh, you know, pick paragraphs from different chapters and bring them together in new themes. So it's open access, it's Creative Commons, and it's meant to be um, providing that resource for teachers so they don't have to spend uh, so much time uh, figuring out all the, the new standards without feeling supported. So here are some features of the ebook. First of all, it's digital, which means you don't need to carry a physical book with you and you can have access to it whenever you have an internet. Second is searchable, which means when you are on the cover page of the ebook, you can click the search icon and search any keywords. Then it will pop up uh, where where the keywords showed up in different topics, different standards. And also you can always use the Control plus F function to search any keywords on the page. And third, it's interactive, which means you can access to the ebook with your mobile phone or um, tablet, PC. The screen is interactive. It will shrink or expand based on your device screen. And also you can, uh, choose where to go, use the hyperlinks in the books. So you can go, if you find any keywords interesting, you can click the hyperlink and go to the detailed page. And fourth is multimodal. We have different kinds of medias. Multimedia in the ebook, we have audio, videos, pictures, animation, and also like the GIF in the uh, slide here, we have GIF. So, uh, there are different methods to allow people to learn knowledge. And we have activities with forms or different sets of activities. And last but not least, accessibility. So uh, all the images uh, are uh, embedded with alt text, with me, which means the screen readers can read the images, can let the user know what contents are included in the image. So even if the reader cannot see the image, they can know what's happened. And it's, these features make the ebook different from traditional books. And if you go to the next page, so this makes the, our ebook, which is different from many other ebooks, which means we are uh, following the Creative Commons. This book is OER, Open Educational Resource. Uh, open Educational Resource, which means either it's in a public domain, which means it's free to use, or like our book, have license to allow people to engage in the five R activities, retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So we decided to write this book, as I kind of explained a little bit in the opening, because there was A, the new curriculum framework in Massachusetts. Uh, there was new legislation in Massachusetts, uh, the act to promote civic and uh, promote and enhance civic engagement, which talks about uh, every student participating in civic action projects in eighth grade and again in high school. 
and the overriding importance of civic education in schools today. Because as the National Council for Social Studies has said, teaching social studies should include multiple approaches, including fact-based curriculum, facing hard history, addressing controversial topics, confronting fault narratives. And we have been kind of guided by that in uh, creating the interactive explorations uh, within the book. So if we could see the next slide. So here are the topics of the eighth grade Massachusetts curriculum framework. Uh, seven topics, 50 standards are within there. Um, but these are pretty common in other states. Um, and in the AP government and politics as well. So although it's kind of organized initially for Massachusetts, the reach is a lot broader. We could go on to the next slide. Um, then in addition to being able to go through the book by topic and standard, which maybe teachers in Massachusetts would want to do, we've also been creating ways to go through the book by learning pathway, which means bringing interactive explorations from multiple topics around a common theme. So far, we've developed an election 2020 uh, pathway, a Black Lives Matter pathway, an influential women in history pathway, uh, student rights pathway, and a current events pathway. Um, these are uh, explorations, but not tied strictly to the Massachusetts framework. If we can go on to the next slide. The image on the right side of the screen is a yes. screenshot of the elections yes. learning pathway, uh, part of the elections learning pathway. And it links to, as you can see, there's a lot of different links and each one of those links will take you to a different topic, a different standard in the book. And we have curated those into uh, sub themes within the learning pathway to show that uh, rather than having to go linearly through the ebook from one standard to the next, with themes and with the interactivity of the ebook and digital features, you can jump around and, and explore even within sections of the same chapter, which is pretty cool and you, you will have a chance to explore. We sent everyone uh, the link already, I believe, to the elections 2020 in the welcoming uh, email. So each standard, uh, has three parts, an investigate, an uncover, and an engage. So you take a given standard, let's say freedom of the press, and um, uh, the investigate is really a, an interactive exploration designed to kind of explore the territory or the history of that, uh, of that standard. Um, it probably is the closest in the book to uh, covering, although we don't like always to say we're covering the content, we were really more exploring the content, but it's investigating the, what the curriculum framework has identified as core material for that topic, for that framework. Uncover is really an effort to point counterpoint in a lot of ways by getting into little known histories and stories of groups that are underrepresented, not represented uh, in traditional textbooks and curriculum. So we're covering the framework or investigating the framework, uncovering. And then the third module within the standard is engage. This is really an effort to ask students to be begin to think about, engage with the public policy questions and issues that are raised by that standard. Um, really kind of rehearsals for citizenship, if you will, because one, by investigating and then uncovering, maybe you have a better position to engage to think about your own ideas and understandings 
um, and future actions as a citizen in a democracy. So when you do this first um, exploration of the overall thrust of the book, take a look at how each standard utilizes the investigate, the uncover, and the engage. And of course, teachers and students could, you know, you wouldn't have to do all three uh, looking at any given standard. Um, these are lunches. These are um, interactive opportunities to push further beyond a textbook, beyond a framework, into uh, investigations, uncoverings, and engagements. So, uh, Tori or Janet, more to say about that topic uh, of the of that structure? I think uh, I think you covered it very well, and I'm happy for them to get into really seeing what we've been talking about. I think that will help. Um, situate what we've been mentioning in terms of how the ebook is put together and how each chapter is is framed with those three modules and how the learning theories. So we really do want you to to go in and explore, but we want you to do it collaboratively. So I'm going to set up two breakout rooms, and within your breakout room, uh, go ahead and pick a topic like topic seven, news and media literacy, and then divide and conquer who's going to explore which of the topics. Go and check out your designated chapters and then come back to your group and, and share out uh, what you thought about the ebook, um, how you might use it in your practice, uh, ideas you have for improving it that you could share with uh, Bob Chen Young and me. Um, and we'll take about 15 minutes to do this activity. I hope this doesn't mean that you all escape. I've done a fair share of conference presentations this week, and as soon as someone says breakout room, the participant list cuts in half. Uh, we really want this to be a chance where you can build your professional learning network with the other individuals who are here. And I'm not seeing a lot of people escape, which makes me really happy. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop share. I'm gonna mm, pause the recording if I can find it. All right, so now that you've had a chance to explore the ebook and think about how, much, how you might use it in your practice, whether it's to enrich student learning, so students who are, uh, you know, finish early or uh, want to explore more, you can just point them to different sections in this book, or you might have a whole class exploration. There's lots of ways to incorporate this book. We're going to show one such way. So I'm going to talk briefly about choice boards and then hand it over to Bob. Um, so one thing that Bob and I have been doing recently is we've noticed a lot of teachers, I'm in a lot of uh, Facebook groups for social studies educators and various other subjects, and I was noticing a lot of social studies teachers saying, how do I make a, a worksheet into a PDF that students can annotate? And there, there's, you know, nothing wrong with worksheets, but uh, there's great potential with creative thinking to move beyond worksheets to student-centered, higher order thinking. Um, and one way we've found to kind of package that for teachers is through choice boards. So we have an example on the right hand side of a choice board we made for Black Lives Matter. This was based off the Black Lives Matter uh, learning pathway in the ebook and also Bob's really incredible site resources for history teachers. So each of the links throughout the choice board will either take you to the ebook or the wiki and uh, allow for extensive further exploration. Uh, we've created ones for the election, youth activists, change makers, science and tech and history, and current events through the lens of history as well. And what's great about choice boards, is I'll hand it off to Bob. Bob, do you wanna talk about what's awesome about choice boards? You are on mute before you start. <laughs> Still muted. I'm just gonna ask you to mute, unmute. <laughs> okay, there, here I'm back. All right. Um, uh, choice words are a new, um, a whole new territory for me. Um, I love infographics. I mean, I'm forever, I, I enjoy seeing information displayed that way. But infographics are, mainly mostly me just receiving the information 
And what we've been trying to do with the choice boards is really create ways for students to receive and create uh, information. So these choice boards uh, emphasize student-centered explorations, a lot of choice, um, nonlinear because you you can move around the choice board, find um, uh, elements that are interesting and pursue that. Uh, they can be high tech and low tech, uh, but the key in uh, for us in building the choice boards is to constantly uh, emphasize higher order activities for the students. So when you look at the board, you'll, you'll note the topics, but in each one of them, there is a kind of have students do something that's higher order, where they create, they compose, they construct, they design, they invent, they compare and contrast. Um, these are all where the students are using the choice board to construct the knowledge or the information for themselves. Um, and then there's a lot of flexibility because as you can see in that election choice board that's on the, that's on the screen at the moment, um, you could zero in as a class on any of the squares. You could have small groups complete a tic-tac-toe type format across the squares. Um, the, uh, there's, there's a lot of flexibility in how they can be used, which may be very compelling in these online and hybrid you know, situations. So we have a, we have a Bloom taxonomy um, slide, which we should put in there. Yeah, uh, before, maybe... before we get there, take a look at this choice board, uh, Black Lives Matter choice board. Mm -hmm and pick one task you would want to do and write it in the text chat box, which one you would want to do and why you selected that task. You want me to read off the task, uh, Tori? Oh, yeah, can... could you? It's a little small. Yeah, I can read them. So write, and record a protest song for the Black Lives Matter movement, develop a sketch note detailing Toussaint's, oh my gosh, Louverture. life and impact on society. Oh. Very interesting. Uh, design a new product inspired by a black inventor, compare and contrast Shirley Chisholm and Kamala Harris campaigns for office, create an interactive timeline or infographic featuring individuals who refuse to give up their seats on buses, trains, and streetcars, Create 3D artifacts to represent Benjamin Banneker or and George Washington Carver's contributions to math, science, and politics. Bonus points for creating a board game that goes along with those artifacts. Write a children's book about Bessie Coleman. Create a video showcasing the history of Black athletes who engaged in protests. Evaluate the whether the Black Panther Party's 10-point platform is still needed today, or draw a cartoon about Zelda, Jackie, or, or Mix. So I'm seeing some chats. So we've got protest song, create an infographic would be fun. Doing the sketch notes, choose the Black Panther Party. You know what's interesting is I, I did a session this morning for faculty and teacher preparation and I had the same activity and every single person chose the interactive timeline um, option. And they chose it based on the tool, which I thought was really fascinating, as they were really excited about the potential of an interactive timeline. Uh, what's great about choice boards is students can choose based on the technology or the activity or the topic. So there's three choices within each of the boxes uh, that encourage flexible and learner-centered explorations of the topic. And many of the, the examples with tools like interactive timeline or 3D digital artifacts will take you to tools like Tinkercad or um, timeline uh, JS or an interactive timeline. Sketch notes are great, children's books are great. 
what's helpful about these in the times of hybrid and high flex learning you know across the country there's a lot of teachers in these high flex situation where they're teaching half students in person and the other half at home at the exact same time basically working two full-time jobs at the exact same time which teaching one group <laughs> is hard enough but to try and manage two groups separately is mind-boggling and what i have found is when i suggest to teachers for the students who are at home to have them work through these digital choice boards on their own and then the ones in class can focus on the social interaction and mini lectures uh, it creates this kind of station rotation model between in-person and online learning so it supports a more student-centered learning experience rather than the students at home just watching a broadcast of the teacher trying to teach the in-person students so it has really opened up creative learning opportunities and we will hand out uh or we will give a link to these slides and all of the choice boards everything is linked in there and if you want copies of these that you can remix for your own practice uh, just let us know and we'd be happy to give you the link to make a copy i can actually show you a trick for doing that if i click on this election choice board right here and if you see, it might be pretty small at the top of the screen if I move, uh, remove edit and put copy. Uh, it's gonna allow me to make a copy of the document or sometimes you can go to file and make a copy. It just depends on the privacy settings. If you aren't able to do that, then we can easily send you those links and we want to encourage you to remix. And if you don't have time, then hand this off to your students and say, hey, create a choice board on this topic for your peers. Um, so save yourself some times and put students in charge of their learning. Bob? Um, what we've done with the cross links in um, the choice boards is not only do they link to uh, investigates, uncovers, and engages within the ebook, but also to um, a wiki that we've developed at the university called Resources for History Teachers, all one word. This is a large wiki that has a separate page of resources, free online resources, for every single standard in the Massachusetts curriculum framework, as well as the world history, uh, AP world history, AP uh, US history. So um, in some of these uh, choice boards, the link goes to the wiki page of resources. Oh, here's one, for example, where we uh, went from the wiki to the transportation revolution, uh, the wiki page for the transportation revolution, the, the transcontinental railroad to the transportation revolution, uh, with all sorts of uh, material about canals and steamboats and um, uh, roads, um, and um, it probably actually ends up there at the big dig. So um, for the Massachusetts people. Um, so this is a way that the choice board can bring the, the students or the teachers into a, a, a larger array of resources. Because in resources for history teachers, we try to have um, primary sources, video resources, and um, um, other, other materials. So, science and technology in US history can take advantage of both what's in the ebook and what's in the uh, uh, resources for history teachers wiki. In every case, asking students then to do something with the material. And that's where the, the Bloom's taxonomy slide to create, to evaluate, to analyze, to work at the top of the the, the taxonomy in their responses to the choice board. So we don't we have, have time a, for a, the breakout activity, which is totally fine. Uh, Chen Young has been very kind to post a link to our slides, which you can also find in the chat box. <laughs> I thought they were on our slide deck. So um, click, um, feel free to explore the slides. Everything is linked in there. Everything that we create, including the the ebook and the choice boards, all have Creative Commons license, so that you can remix, use, share, however you see fit. We want to create open resources to support educators in their incredible work. And do we have any questions? We had one question, Bob. Oh um, uh, yeah, 
Gorman, Gorman asked um, in the future if there would be a resource in each topic standard that would provide ideas for civic engagement projects. And the answer is yes, we have some of those already uh, in, in topics. Um, and uh, we, we uh, plan to do more, especially as more examples come from, from the field. But in the suggested learning activities, section of the um, of, of each module there are uh, where we fit them uh, suggestions for civic action initiatives um, so the answer is yes we this year we're also working and Tori may want to say more about uh, this a little bit um, infusing media literacy and media literacy uh, activities in, into the ebook. Um, that's a second grant that we have to expand the, expand the project. So, um, yeah, I was talking about that briefly with my breakout room. We got a, a grant to work with a really incredible media literacy expert at University of Massachusetts Amherst and her team of students. And we're going to be adding media literacy activities in every single chapter of the ebook. And we're currently working on topic seven, freedom of the press and media literacy, and topic four related to elections materials. And we may very well be reaching out to all of you in the next week or two to be kind of our um, initial advisors and fill out a survey to share your thoughts around the media literacy activities. Because uh, in addition to civic action, which uh, I have an example here, this is in topic 4.5 voting and citizen participation in this investigate section and in the suggested learning activity they design a proposal or podcast series or social media campaign or public service announcement to encourage more people to engage in voting um, we also really need more media literacy opportunities for students as well so um, you will also find in addition to teacher design learning plans there's going to be embed in media literacy activity plans and you may have seen some of them if you have explored topic seven we've already started to embed some of those throughout the book and we'll be getting initial feedback Ooh, these ones are all the way at the bottom here we go media literacy connections so that's our next plan of action we do want to incorporate more civic action project ideas and potentially down the road add a chapter around that because there's the new um, was it a law, Bob, that all middle or in high school students have to engage in one civic action project? So we want to create resources around that as well. Uh, this is kind of the beauty of, uh, for me and for Tori and Chen Yang, I think, um, is the ebook e becomes a kind of living book. Um, we're able to change it, expand it, uh, modify it. Um, uh, it, it kind of it is not static, it is evolving. Um, and uh, that means that it can be very responsive to what everybody out in the field uh, needs. So we're really um, appreciating that you came today. Look forward to corresponding with you, send us comments, send us feedback, um, use the resources and uh, have a great uh, rest of the fall uh, in your schools. Yes, thank you all for joining for your attention tonight. We hope you find these resources valuable and you use them in your practice. And you may be hearing from us again in the short future regarding our new media literacy additions to the book. So if you have any of your questions, feel free to reach out through email, uh, which is on the slide deck. Otherwise, best of luck with the rest of your semesters. Thank you so much. This is a great resource. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. Okay. I love the choice boards. That's great. <laughs>